Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 20 of Mist Conceptions. I'm your host, David White. I hope everybody's staying warm out there. It is freezing here, literally. So, stay bundled up, stay warm, and uh, why don't you curl up next to the fire and listen to a good old episode of uh, Misconceptions. Our anniversary is coming up in a few weeks. Uh, It's pretty crazy to think that we've almost been doing this podcast for a year. Uh, And we have some pretty cool news that we're going to be telling you for our anniversary Uh, Some pretty cool stuff that is about to be coming for your eyeballs and your ear holes. Uh, So, uh, awesome stuff. Be excited about it. We really are, and we're excited to tell you about it, but not until our anniversary. Our SoundCloud shouts out for this episode are as follows. Tyler Waits, Aldo Sama, Sir Rage A Lot, and Rob Percival. Uh, The four of you. Welcome to Misconceptions. Uh, I hope that you like the show. Keep on listening. Um, And you know, if you ever want to chat, go over to Facebook and Twitter and talk to us, and uh, we'll talk back at you. We don't have any iTunes shout-out this week, so uh, if you want an iTunes shout-out, go on over there and leave us a little review and a rating to tell us uh, what you like about the show, what you would like to see us do with the show. You know, you've heard me do this spiel before. We like iTunes reviews. That's everything for the announcements this week. Um, Yep, that's it. Let's go on and get to that episode. And then there I was. I pulled out my weapon and I thought, I'm going to take this monster on myself. And I pulled it and I shot it and it did nothing. And I thought, surely, no, I could do this. Yeah, I could do this. And then out of nowhere, this claw just crushes me and sends me into the abyss and the ground. And I thought, this is the end. This is where I die. And I lean over again to take a shot and the monster just leans deeper into the crevice and starts trying to bite at me and sniff me and I I was like this this is where we all die I I don't know what we can do now So this episode opens up, we are in Rin's office, uh, the crew is all back together, um, I, I assume that uh, Deja and, uh, Pablo? Shoot, what's his name, Pablo, yeah, Pablo are, you know, working in the office uh, area, then you are with the crew and also Javi in the uh, your back room in mm-hmm. your office. Okay, it's so. Tight. Um, who is who is telling Javi this story? It would make most sense if Esther did. And that's when we heard the sirens coming, and I told them to leave. The camera pans over to Javi, and he is. Uh, not reclining, but he is sitting in the very same cot that not just a few days ago, maybe a week or some days ago, that Mr. Smalls was tied up in. And uh, he's sitting there with his uh, with his fingers stapled and in front of his chin. And he says, So you, uh, you all have <clears throat> abilities? I mean, I guess... I guess you could say that. Somewhat. I mean, Bill's just a sack of potatoes, but... It's basically worthless, but, you know. He has abilities. Aren't we past that point? We're never past that point. <laughs> he runs his fingers through his graying hair. This is, a. This is making a lot more sense. The... The water treatment plant... The stuff at uh, 123 Blanco Street. And he looks at you, Esther. And you too? 
Mine are different. Uh, what do you mean? I actually think you might know something about mine. Huh? I saw this picture. It was of you and dad and some lady with this ring. Uh, what a uh, what picture? She pulls it out of her pocket. He, I don't know why she's. I don't know why yeah. I said it like that. She pulls it out of her pocket. He he takes it and he looks at it, uh, and a smile kind of comes on his face. And <laughs> those were the days. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, Lena. Her name's Lena. He hands it back to. You. So. Um, that that ring you wear, that uh, that used to belong to Lena. Then don't you already know about my powers? No, I haven't seen Lena in years. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I um, I, I mean, I've seen that ring, and I've seen you wearing it, and I just uh. I don't know. I never made a never made a connection with why you would have her old ring. Like I said, I haven't uh, I haven't seen her in years. But she's alive. <laughs> I hope so. She was uh Well, let me put it this way, if uh I <laughs> if I'm your uncle, uh she's your aunt. We were close, uh thick as thieves. <sighs> Those were the days. All right, so, um, anyways, going up against the mafia, huh? You know, they, uh, they own and operate more than half the city. You sure you, uh, can take them on? He looks around the office with, uh, all you have at your disposal. We already have. Look what it cost you. Look, Mm -hmm. I know this city's messed up. I rub shoulders with the messed up part of this city every day when I go to work. Change this city, turn it around in one night. It's not going to happen in one night. We know it's not going to happen in one night. That doesn't mean we should just stand by. I mean, we've taken care of drug dealers. We're taking on the mafia. There's, there's just so much going on in this city. It's, it's a whole con- conspiracy, as we just told you. It, it just, we just have to do it. I don't know how to explain it better. It's just it's something that we must do. It, there's an injustice to not do anything. No, I, uh, I commend your spirit. It's just I've lost uh, I've lost a lot of people trying to fix the system. Well, and, and, and that's the thing, though. I mean, we have, we have our special powers, and we can do things that people like you, ordinary people, can't do. Hey, watch it, String Bean. <laughs> I'll lay you out. <laughs> I mean, you're special and all, but... And obviously Esther really likes you, but... Yeah, okay, I'll need the snowflake talk. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're the one who's not willing to fight anymore. Oh, snap. He doesn't say anything to that. He just... Kind of, he stares at you. And he looks at the ground. At this point, is there a window in your office? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well... Zach, could there be a window in your <laughs> office? She needs something, obviously. There's a window on the door. <laughs> then, no. I know. Well, like, whatever area they're in the office, I'm, like, walking to an opposite corner, and mm-hmm. I'm just kind of, like, oh my God. contemplating things, like, away from everybody. Mm-hmm. So what's next? What are we going to do? Javi... We appreciate you being here, and we appreciate listening to your story, but I personally would be a lot more comfortable if I could just be with my friends right now. Yeah, um, yeah, I got a, got a lot of information to think about, too. Esther, um, can we go for a walk? 
Sure. Okay. Um, he opens up the door and, you know, holds it open for you. Mm. Says, um, uh, see ya. And closes the door and follows her out. Lynn just sits down at his computer and just starts typing away, working on stuff. I like that string bean. I'm going to use that. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry if that was rude. I just, I don't know. I didn't want to talk about my powers in front of him anymore. I mean, it's a tense situation. We got a lot to lose, a lot to be afraid of, so. Why? He's the only person that, only regular person that's not like us that we can actually trust. I mean, he's, he's helped us out a couple times. Yeah, maybe, but I don't know if I'll ever trust him. What about us? Do you trust us? Eh, depends <laughs> on the day. Damn it. I don't, I don't trust you at all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did y'all know about that ring? Yes. Did we know about the ring? You've, seen her, you've seen her wear it. Um I don't know if you've actually seen her use it. The most flagrant time she's used it was whenever she, she burned it on me. Yeah, <laughs> burned it on uh, Rin. I mean, you know she must have been special somehow, but you might have just thought she was some rough and tumble bar owner uh, because she does not have um, as obvious powers mm-hmm. as the three of you. Yeah. Um. So yeah, now you're like, huh? A ring? That's where she gets her powers. Like, what? What exactly are? are her powers what are those (laughs) what are those (laughs) yes i've seen her use the ring she used it on me when i was trying to steal the semi-truck with the alien that you apparently control now do you literally have to be the most annoying human on the planet do you literally can you figuratively just shut up (laughs) (laughs) can you physically go away yeah (laughs) i can am i going to absolutely not Hi, I'm Bill. Okay, apparently I need to take both of you to school with me next week so you can learn some manners with my third graders. Are you saying manner like the bread? No. Fre- Are you saying manner like a house? No. <laughs> you people in your accents. <laughs> you have practically the same one. How dare you? <laughs> if I had the same accent, I would talk like this because I'm a British person and I like eating fish and chips and I'm... I call trunks boots and and stuff like that. And yeah. they say and they say about God bless the queen. No, that's Canada. No, I'm pretty sure that's you. I saw it on WikiLeaks. <laughs> this conversation. Yeah, please. please we're gonna over. we're gonna transition out of this conversation. <laughs> um, so British transition. listeners of misconceptions, I love you. My character is just. <laughs> He likes to be a funny Bill guy. is just belligerent. Don't ever be offended, <laughs> listeners, by anything Bill says. <laughs> I'm offended. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, we transition to um, Javi and Esther. Um, and actually, the walk they took was to Javi's car. And they're kind of just driving along. Uh, Javi's silent. He is rubbing his temple with his his forefinger and thumb as he's driving. Um, just a silent uh, drive. <laughs> this is going to be a good scene for a podcast then. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, pulls off the main road, goes on this he's gonna not kill back road. Oh my gosh, you're just saying you trusted him. Well, it's been fun, guys. No. no. I hope we like my new character. No. <laughs> Um, he pulls into a cemetery and it, he opens up the car door and uh, leaves the car running. Uh, he says, come on. Uh, if you follow. I follow. He leads you to a grave that you have visited many times before. Mm-hmm. Um, your dad's name is on it. Uh, some flowers, flowers that you left the last time that you were there. Uh, Morty goes up. Not Morty. <laughs> Morty appears. Morty's here. I've been here all along. No. Um, I was actually afraid that Jimmy the Butcher was like going to be my dad or something. Yeah. Like, Hi, my daughter. Son. You're way too young. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Javi walks up and he pulls out a flask uh, from his coat and takes a swig and hands it to you. Towards the end of his life, your dad was wrapped up in something. 
He didn't tell me what. He was obsessed with it. Wouldn't let me in. Wouldn't tell me anything about it. I tried to be there for him. Maybe I could have done more. I could. I could have been more there for him. <clears throat> Talk to him. Try to get him to share what he was it talking about. It wouldn't have changed anything. We don't know that. I do. Your dad died. And I watched him die. I wasn't there. But I watched him throw his life away. I watched him chasing something. That in the grand scheme of things wasn't that important. Because what was important was what he was leaving back home. I lost my best friend. I lost my brother. And I swore to hell and back that I would not let his daughter fall in his footsteps. And at this point, uh, Javi has tears that are running down his face. And he turns to you and he says, I love you like the daughter I never had. I have to finish what he started. The thing is, I also made a promise when he died. No, you don't. There's a lot of stuff your dad had that you don't have to finish. It's not you. It's your own life. You can live it however you want. But Esther, please don't live it like this. This is the path that I've chosen. And she walks back to the car. You, uh, you wait in the car for a little bit. You see him. He stands there at the grave for a few more minutes. Uh, he takes his flask and kind of pours out the rest of it on the tombstone. He screws it back on, puts in his coat, walks back to the car. Uh, he closes it, drives back, just as silent as he was, pulls up to Ren's place. Uh, and as you're getting out, he takes your hand and he says, I lost your father and I don't want to lose you. You're not going to lose me. And she goes back inside. So you close the door, walk mm-hmm. into Ren's place. He watches you. And as he puts the car into gear, he says, your father never said I would lose him either. And then he drives off. So, Esther, you walk back into the, uh, the office, um, and Deja, like, looks up from her work and says, Hello, Miss Black. I respond to Deja, and I'm like, How you doing, kid? And you see, <laughs> she's, like, <laughs> typing away, and then she looks up, and she takes out her earbuds. What? <laughs> <laughs> she rolls her eyes and opens the door to Ren's office. Okay. And she puts the earbuds back in. Uh... Well, I'm so glad you were back because these two won't shut up. Yes, because she has a ridiculous accent. Oh. And I'm and she's losing just my ever-loving words. mind. I love fish and chips. <laughs> Don't. That was such a good accent. That sounds exactly oh, like her. Robin Look, Hood. you're finally getting along. Robin Hood, it's I love true, you so much, Robin expense. Hood. Well, you, know. you don't know anything about Robin Hood, okay? You don't know his heart. Hey, you don't know hey, his love. Hey. What, you have a crush on him? Okay. All right, guys. Can we look Clearly, him up on our pair I can't phone? be away from y'all for even five minutes. <laughs> I think you were gone for like closer to 45 minutes. Yeah, you were gone for a while. Yeah, what was that all about? He just needed to talk. Mm, mm-hmm. For 45 minutes? He took me to my father's grave. Way to go, you idiot. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Snap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Esther. Do you trust him? With my life. All right. I guess we can give him a break then. You won't, but Thanks. I like him. He's a stand-up guy. Ren, you're not helping my case. Damn it. (laughs) (laughs) What do we do now? To the SUV. (laughs) (laughs) Have we repaired the SUV? No, it's been Uh -uh. sitting in... It's been sitting in Bill's garage. (laughs) (laughs) Bill's like, I was supposed to be working on that. My bad. (laughs) Just kidding. Flashback. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need the SUV right now. Um, so what time of day is it at this point? Uh, nighttime. Yeah. At this point, I think we all just need to get some rest. Yeah, I've got a lot of work to catch up on. We all just look at you 
and nod our heads like, what are you talking about? Uh, we're at my office. I have to make some kind of money to keep this business afloat. Hmm. Fine. So meet this weekend at the rubble of Morty's. I just meant we needed to sleep tonight and get together in the morning. Oh. Okay. I mean, I'm always down for some whiskey at 8 a.m. <laughs> Vodka on the rocks for me. So you have, like, business owner insurance or something? Because your place is a little... I'll figure it out. It'll be... Okay. Start to ask. If not, you could always put Rin to work. I just roll my eyes. He's a physical it. specimen. Look at him. <laughs> Fiddly. String beanie. All string beanie. Fiddly nerd. <laughs> All string beanie and stuff. <laughs> Okay, we could meet at my apartment in the morning. Don't you have school? Yeah, I don't think I go to that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the kids I, don't need I've you? I've given up the routine. Wait, maybe it's a break or something. Maybe it's like spring break or what? Yeah, winter I mean, break. Well, that's why I said this break. weekend, but we could meet in the morning, <laughs> well, too. When is it? I mean, what day thrust? of the week was it? Because I we were fighting like all day. Right, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why We're I'm still using this fighting all day. <laughs> Narratively, we could say it's over a break, though, if we wanted to. Or we could oh, say it was a Friday that we Well, fought. okay, so, fine. Yes, we will meet next weekend. Okay. <laughs> so you want to spend a week? Well, what Fo- day is it? <laughs> I was assuming it was Friday. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Ooh, see right. you tomorrow We're morning. Tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> oh, see you That's at so night. Sad. Can we? Can we? Can we do nine thirty? Got a hot date? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> no, I'm just so I just got a dentist appointment or something? <laughs> no, on it's Saturday? just Saturday morning. That's when they put all the good cartoons I on. Knew you were just oh my god! <laughs> no, just I was I was thinking you watch cartoons because of like your son and yeah. stuff. Oh. I was thinking of feels. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> <laughs> just gotta cut this whole part out. But <laughs> all right, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay. Well, um, I guess let's have a short moto- photo montage. What do y'all do tonight? So Esther is at her apartment because obviously she can't be at the bar. Um, and have we seen Esther's apartment? We have. Am I going to describe it now? No, because I don't remember how I described it before. That's fair. <laughs> but I picture it like Sandra Bullock's apartment in Miss Congeniality. But anyways, <laughs> um, she's been pretty beat up and stuff. And so she's got like a candle lit in her bathroom and she's like soaking um just trying to like decompress from everything and trying to like also like heal up so you know she soaks and everything and then when she gets out she obviously she's been banged up before so she's like taking she's actually taking the time that she hasn't before and like bandaging up and like cleaning the cuts and and those kinds of things. So, like, she's still going to have some because, like, I mean, she's sore. She's banged up. Mm -hmm. But, like, I would say, I don't know. Okay. Uh, Like, one or two, maybe? Yeah, why don't you step back your spectrum by one? Okay. So you spend the night kind of, not pampering yourself, but but just taking it. So now it's not two and a half. Now it's just two? Now it's just one. Okay. Okay. When I I say step it back by one spectrum, I mean, like, all the way down to the next the number. next number. Yeah. Down so down to, to one. The next one. Okay. So that's how Esther is taking care of herself tonight. Mm. This is like the lowest your injury has been since like we started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Esther has been held to sti- held together by stitches and band aids this entire game. The Rocky Marciano of the misconception yeah. universe. She's a tough girl. Okay, so Faye goes home. Um, walks in, throws her keys down, walks over to her desk, um, just like rebandages, rebandages <laughs> the like wounds and stuff because she's just kind of bruised at this point. Okay. Um, and then sits down and pulls out an envelope that is in the bottom drawer, um, underneath like a fake bottom of mm-hmm. the drawer. Okay. Pulls out an envelope and parchment and starts writing a letter. And at the very top, she writes, Dear Robin Hood. And then writes about all the things that happened and how 
broken she's feeling and how confused she's feeling, folds it up, puts it in the envelope, flips the envelope over, and you see on the front, letters for Robin Hood when I finally find him. And, like, puts it back in her drawer. Um, And then this is something we talked about off podcast. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go ahead and put a crack in my unstoppable activist Why? thing because that those power tags are wants to do good and be kind to others um, and neither of those things happened in the what you call it the the fight scene yeah in the fight scene because uh, so she's because you lost control with the monster and yes. like mauled those people yes okay um, so she's just like basically just spends her whole time thinking about that and processing that um, and then the only like photo montage thing I could think of doing was adding a tick to the fair maiden an attention tick since she was like okay writing about robin hood. so since you spin it writing for robin hood uh-huh. take a tick in a uh, fair maiden okay so game one attention ren starts to type on his computer and is like feeling like these small like static shocks but a little stronger he's like you've got to be kidding me and he um he has a mirror in his desk to like look at his implants and stuff, and he's like this skin. Some of the skin has like gone away, and the implants are very clear, uh, and they're pretty obvious. And he, since he was crushed by the monster, he like, um, like looks at his like chest, and he looks at you know his head and stuff, and he just sees all of these like um, cracks, I guess you could say, or like crush marks. Uh, and he's like, you've got to be kidding me. And he, like, slams his fist on the desk. And he slowly gets up and um, opens the door. And he's like, Deidre, could I see you in my office, please? Huh? Oh, uh, uh, sure, Mr. Pascal. Uh, she stands up, but, like, her earphones are, like, plugged into her laptop. So she, like, stands up and they, like, gank out of her ear. And she's like, oh, oh, uh, uh. And she, like, pauses for a second. And then she, like, rushes into the room, like, brushes past you very abruptly. And she, like, turns around, like, uh, yes. Deidre, you, surprisingly, are my most trusted employee. I love Pablo. He's a great guy. We've been best friends since college. But he's an idiot. And you see Pablo. You, <laughs> Both of you, like, turn to look at Pablo, and he, like, holds up his beer that he's <laughs> drinking. <laughs> and then sets it back down and just gets back to him. I don't know, doing whatever Pablo does for your company. Yeah. Has like a word document open, just slamming his fingers on the keyboard. X Z Y X Z Y X Z Y M N N M got L P And so like Deidre comes in, he shuts the door, he sits down, he's like, Deidre I guess I, I don't know how to say this to you, but I you've done incredible work for the company. Oh, you've thank you. You've created all these programs and you've boosted our website and made the company better. Thank you. I just I really need your help with this. I know you got your degree um in advanced electronics and I know that you've created machines and I know that you've done all this work and I really need your help. And I like pull back my hood and you see this like pulsing um like the metal and pulsing lights. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I think this is the first time we've gotten a good look at Rin's head uncovered. So, yeah, tell us, like, what exactly does it look like? I mean, there's just, like, all these scars, like, running back as if they're hair, basically. And it's just, like, deeply scarred tissue. Um, and so you see this, like, strong, just metallic glow. And this pulsing blue lights, and there's like a blinking red light next to his forehead, mm-hmm. or, or next to his eye, uh, of just like, um, just the inside of the implant, which is hardly ever shown. And mm-hmm. he's like, Danger, I need your help. I need you to help repair my head. I, at this point, I just, I just can't do it myself. I can't see it correctly, and well, if I mess up, something will happen. And I need your help. We, I can't really tell you the details, but I just encountered something that I've never encountered before, and I really need you to help me with this. Can you? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, do you have any tools or anything? And he, like, presses a button on his desk, and it, the um, secret lab, like, slides down. He's like, 
Yes, we can work in here. <laughs> Damn, the secret lab. And under the basic tools panel, there's a few wrenches. I hate you so much. <laughs> What's well, a power tag? My secret lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Cool. That's yeah. Cool. Does it like have your gun and like all your field equipment and stuff? Yeah. Okay. She like looks at it and she's like, "Oh my god, this is so cool! You're like a." You're like a superhero. Like, like this is like your secret layer. <gasps> Do you have like a Rin mobile, like underneath? Or no, it would be a Pascal mobile. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I mean, I will help you. <laughs> she like takes a deep breath and uh, she grabs like some of the tools and delicate machinery that you use. You use to usually do this yourself. But um, she, like, starts working, and she's usually pretty bumbling. Like, everything everything we've seen her do is very bumbling. But, like, she's actually... You don't know if it's, like, she's more at home with machines or something, but, like, she's very delicate and precise with how she is fixing the implants. Uh, and a few minutes pass by, and um, she, like, clicks it back into place, and the red light blinks off and a normal kind of blue light resumes. Um, And um, she puts the tools down and she like runs her hands over the implants. Like there, I think everything is a, everything is okay. Like she's kind of messing with your hair. um, And then immediately puts her hands down at her side. And she's like, everything looks great. Uh, Thank you, Deja. Uh, and he like awkwardly like gets up and Oh yeah, you get up but you're facing like too close together like awkwardly and like you're like uh, you're pretty tall and lanky, so yeah, you would be kinda taller than her. And she uh stares at you and there's this very there's a sequence where like she has like dreamy eyes and she's like looking up at you and like she takes a step forward closer into you. And then you hear this clink, clink, and you see that she's like dropped the little scalpel thing on your desk behind you that she was still holding on to. She's like, if you ever need anything, I, I sit right out there. She like reaches around your side and points. Uh, uh, bye. And she like just kind of slowly walks out of the office. And Ren just like stands there and is like, you idiot. Why didn't you kiss her? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just talk about how that was like really awkward? But like, I don't know if I don't know how it was for you, Tessa. But being my husband, like you were like, it was funny because the way you describe like different situations that we've had, like now I get, now I get it because like this is like that awkwardness, like that is David, <laughs> and so like that's you in situations. But you you play it off very well though. So I don't know it until later. You're like, yeah, I was so nervous to hold your hand and stuff like that. But now I know what's going on in your. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm super <laughs> smart. <laughs> it just was like it was like we're both seeing the awkward side yeah. of them, and like. Was so is like, that was that a hot scene for you, ladies? Seeing your husbands <laughs> romantic? Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, was that a hot scene for me. you, Jaime? I'm sorry if that was a weird place to go to. I just like couldn't help. I was like, no, can't I'm help okay. it like that. Yeah. Did someone okay. turn on the heater? The Goodness. Anyways. Zach and our it's entire relationship has just always been <sighs> it's super a awkward. Hot. Super awkward. But that's what I'm saying. Like, so they're both super awkward. So right. now they're being super awkward with each other. We have to sit back and watch them be super awkward with somebody else. You go. <laughs> You go, Glen Coco. We're just role playing our characters. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know about you, Zach, but it's kind of hot in here. <laughs> but anyways, she, you say, idiot. She, what, what was? Excuse me. Nothing. Uh, it's fine. Go back to work, please. Oh, okay. She like opens up the door, and like before she like she's walking away and kind of like looking over her shoulder at you, and she totally doesn't see where she's stepping and like steps into the bucket of her trash. Some might call it a trash basket. <laughs> and she, like, trips and, like, falls into her chair and, like, knocks over her computer. And she's like, no, 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 no. Aww. And then um, uh, <laughs> Pablo looks over at her and looks over at you and lifts his beer <laughs> and sets it back down and gets back to typing. <laughs> what did you want to get from that? Heal myself. Okay. 
Uh, what's your injury at right now? Three. Three? Go ahead and step it down by... I'm going to give it two. Because I'm going to say that uh, the little romance gave you something. Love can heal a man. Yeah. Rin is learning to love again. Or for the first time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I would say he's still, like, bruised from... Like, his human part of him is still bruised. Mm-hmm. But the mechanical... But his implants are set back. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. Okay. Good. I'm glad Deja's coming more into the limelight. Bill. All right, I'm going to have to narrate this, like not okay. in Bill's accent because it's just narrating a scene. Okay. But so Bill gets home, opens the door, doesn't even turn any lights on, just closes it, uh, kind of walks upstairs and falls into bed, just fully clothed. He's just tired. Um, it's been a long day. A little beat up. A little crushed. Um, and, and he falls asleep and he has a dream, but this is different than his normal dreams, um, which are usually really sad affairs about his, um, wife and son. Um, this dream is, is different. It's really vibrant and, and sunny and tropical. Um, and in this dream, he's, he's sitting up high and he doesn't know where, and there are people, they're seemingly villagers from, um, from a local place on this, what looks to be an island. Um, that he's on and they're bringing him all of these gifts and and setting them at his feet and singing and dancing and he's really confused but he's he's happy um, which is something that he doesn't feel often Um, and then finally these these villagers are done dancing and and in unison they all say thank you Akat and Bill's like thinking that's not his name at all and and suddenly he he wakes up or at least he thinks he wakes up and he sits up in his bed and his the walls in his house are peeled back um and he's greeted by these different uh, beautiful scenes of of life coming into being of flowers blooming of of births happening of even the earth fertilizing um and becoming green and, and beautiful and then he hears a voice say, Your purpose is life, not death. And then he wakes up and he is, What the hell was that about? He's kind of sweating and just sits there. Okay. Um, go ahead and give yourself an attention in, a, I guess, your mysterious ink. Or was it named now? Imbued ink. Imbued ink. Okay. Could I give an attention to Pascal and Associates with the... <sighs> Would that be a possible thing or no? Wait, can we say that he, Akat, healed me in that dream state? <laughs> <laughs> it was a healing no. experience. No. <laughs> uh, Let's just stick for one. One montage is for one thing. So the next morning, um, where what did you say you were meeting? Faze. Faze. Okay. So you all show up at. Bless you. Bless you. Sorry. Um, so next morning, you all show up at Faze. Okay. So here's the deal. I don't entirely know when this is going to end, but we need to find some way. Excuse me. I'm, I'm over at the fridge. Like, do you have any orange juice or something? Yes. Just keep looking. If not, there's oranges on the patio. You can just squeeze yourself some orange juice. Can you make them squeeze themselves? <laughs> I don't or? really feel like it right uh, now. All right. Bill. I just, I thought you were a gracious host, but. Oh, for the love. <laughs> and then Ren goes up and he's like, but she's got alcohol in the freezer. Hey. <laughs> and he just pulls out a bottle and he's like... I pour okay. myself a glass of orange juice and come sit down. <laughs> I know we don't know how long it's going to last, but... I just... We need to end this. As soon as possible. We need to find a way to get to the end. What do we still need to find out? We don't know anything. I mean, we know that there's a mist. We showed up at the water treatment plant and... Somehow passed out and had these mysterious enemies appear and attack us and then disappear and then a giant monster at Morty's and the mafia. I mean, do we, 
At this point, we need to find the monster, and we need to find Jimmy the Butcher. Let's uh, maybe see what Linda Lockwood uh, might have heard about some of this stuff. Because, I mean, she's, she does have connections that we might not have. That's not a bad idea. Maybe you should call her. Yeah, since you like her at all. You, that's you. That's you. He's married. Damn it. <laughs> we should maybe revisit Mr. Smalls as well. Yeah, he will really be happy to see us. So what are the, all the loose ends we have? We have Mr. Smalls. We have Linda Lockwood. We I have think Linda Lockwood's more of a uh, continuation, a continuation and an asset. Mm-hmm. As much as I hate her guts, and as much as Ren loves her guts, we have Jimmy the Butcher mm-hmm. and the monster and the mafia. The mafia. What do, you, do you, have you felt anything since that night mm-hmm. with the the monster? Sometimes when I'm just sitting alone. I will have flashes. I, d- I don't know if I'm seeing what he's seeing or, or if it's flashes of what happened. But it's there. Hmm. It's probably a little... It is... I agree with that. It's pretty important that we get that monster, figure out where he came from or what we need to do about him. But it's... Who knows what he's doing out there. Or she. What are we going to do with the monster when we find it? While this is going on, Esther is going to use her um, surface thoughts to try to see if Faye is, like, having any other connections that she's afraid to talk about with the monster. Hmm. No. So you're wanting to use your surface thoughts to, like, see if she's lying? No, I don't think she's lying, but I think that she she could be having more of a connection and be afraid to admit it. Like, even to myself. Yeah. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll a uh, investigate, I guess. Okay. I'm going to use investigative and surface thoughts. Sure. Okay. And I'm not going to subtract anything because I don't think this would have. We followed the drug lead thing to the end, but Mm -hmm. that's still an issue. The portal. Completely forgot about that. I just brought it up. Did you really? Yes. Oh, sorry about that. You know we don't listen to you. What? The portal of the water treatment plant. Hi, I'm Bill. I'm an idiot. Uh, Hi, I'm Bill. This is Rin, also known as Jackass. <laughs> Sorry, should, that's I have to say that to get my accent straight. Uh-huh. In the, it would, was, would James be a loose end? Oh, yeah, we need to figure out what happened with James. Because he like straight up disappeared. Oh yeah, that's right. He didn't even put in a two weeks. Hang on. <laughs> I think it would be a good idea to at least talk to someone who could give us some information. I mean, every place we go, we keep fighting people. What'd you roll? I rolled a seven. Like, is there a piece of the monster still with her? Like, is the monster causing her, like, some changes? Or, like, you know what is I mean? Is like, affecting her? Yeah. Is it like a stigma? Um, so you, you do this surface thoughts. You just kind of reflexively hold out your hand. Uh, will the magic to work or will the ring to work its magic you kind of pry not deeply into her thoughts because it's only surface thoughts but um you don't feel like the monster has left any sort of residue with her or like is going to change her or anything like that but you do get like this sense of fear coming from Faye so, yeah, you do that on the side. Nobody really notices. Yeah. I was going to say that she rolled a seven and I felt like a prick and, like, looked at her. Like, not, not that she's a prick. But I felt <laughs> like... <laughs> you did say that. I felt a prick. <laughs> I felt a prick in my... But I felt like something... 
<laughs> bumped my Go brain <laughs> and like turned and saw her hand. Yeah, and then like she quickly like puts it away and like oh, it wasn't me, <laughs> but you. Now knowing what the ring does and that she has this ring, you kind of hmm. But yeah, I just like glare at her because I'm not a hundred percent sure. So, so um, we've identified quite a few loose ends. I think I don't know. I just think it'd be useful to talk to Lockwood and see if she's knows anything about any of these people or. She could point us in the right direction. I think that as an investigative journalist, Lockwood would be worth talking to. I mean, I agree. She was at the... No, I don't want your opinion because I know why you want to see her. What do you two think? I'm sorry. You could go go ahead, Rin. I'm just I'm giving she, you my time. I mean, she she was at the pound, and she was at a lot of the places that we went to. Yeah, and even if we give, even before that, even even before we were there. And these would be some pretty juicy stories. So we just if we give her names, maybe she'd be willing to look into it, or maybe she's heard of of it already, and she can throw us a bone. I honestly think we need to split up. And do some investigating. You want to split the party? I want to split the party. You want to throw a split on the party? Oh, God. I'm just concerned about leaving the monster and Jimmy the Butcher out there for too long. Yeah. I mean, but do do we have any ideas as to where they'd be? I mean, we need somebody who maybe has ties with the mob, knows where they would hide out whenever they're... Licking their wounds, as it were. Yeah. I mean, you can yeah. even drive Faye around to see if she senses anything while Bill and I go talk to Linda Lockwood. Drive her around in what? Bill's car. It's an Oldsmobile. It's pretty... Uh, it's copyrighted. It's, it's a boxy-looking car from... <laughs> The older people might drive this boxy looking car. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> it's called an Oldsmobile. <laughs> just kidding. You just <laughs> age. Age. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you could take my car. Just uh, fill her up with gas before you bring her fill back. Fill her up with gas before you bring her back. Here you go. Esther catches the keys and looks at Faye. Are you okay with this? No, but I don't really see another option. They all exit the apartment at this point, I assume, because she's not going to want to leave them there. (laughs) Yeah, no. With good reason. (laughs) And when they get down to the car, the guys go, whatever. (laughs) And then when we get in the car, what is it, Faye? I just don't want to lose control like that again. I I mean, I, I killed four people. Maimed four people. It wasn't really you. And it was self-defense. There could have been a better way. They could have hurt lots of other people. They could have. But I don't know if it was my decision to take their life. My life motto is to steal from the rich and give to the poor, not to kill the rich to give to the poor. I understand. Let's just find this monster and be done with this mess. Where to first? I keep seeing a dark, rocky area. Um, Maybe underground somewhere but not necessarily under a building um let's check out the park all right so you esther and faye head for the park mm-hmm. um what, what about you two what are what are y'all investigating are you going to linda? we're going to linda and there is much less deep of a conversation happening in that we have the radio blasting and it's like dun 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 dun
banging our heads. <laughs> yeah, so that's what's happening in the and car. This is the first time they've gotten along the whole game. Yeah, because yeah. we, we don't have to talk to each other. We can just. Yeah. Head, head. <laughs> uh, okay. And I guess you're driving because it'd be your vehicle, right? Because they've got my vehicle. Rin doesn't have a vehicle. He has a bike. <laughs> so yeah. you so are I'm both on the bike. So I'm on the pegs, and we're each we're sharing a pair of headbutt earbuds. In. Yeah. So the what's girls, the pixie service thing? Sticks. Sticks, sticks ferry service. So we. Pixie service. I call sticks ferry service, and they pick us up. And, and we're still listening. to Yeah, them. we're still like we're we're like yeah. turn it up, turn it up, turn it. And the driver's just like. Yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 we're just sitting dun, in the back. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so. The girls drive off one side of the screen in a, the Oldsmobile, and you drive off in the Sticks Ferry Service, going your separate directions, and that is where we will end today's episode. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Missed Conceptions. Our next episode will be released on February 26th. If you are a fan of the show, why don't you go ahead and show us that you're a fan of the show on Facebook and Twitter. You can find us there, you can talk to us, you can like our pages, and heck, if you use the uh, the hashtag misconceptions, uh, I might come and you know comment on your status or your your tweets or whatever because we like to see when people talk about us. City of Mist is an RPG created by Son of Oak Productions, and you can go to cityofmist.co to see more of their products and find out when those core rulebooks are shipping. Uh, I'm expecting mine any day now, so I'm very excited about that. But go give them some support if you're listening to this podcast. You probably like uh, that game, so uh, just go on and buy it already. The music you heard at the beginning of this episode, and we'll hear here in a little bit, was composed by Aaron Wharton, and you can find more of his music at AaronWharton.net. And that is all for this week's episode of Missed Conceptions. Uh, I'm going to go into the other room now and watch some Olympics with uh, my wife and Zach and Tessa. Uh, But, you know what? I hope everybody has a good week. If you're watching the Olympics, I hope your uh, team wins. Uh, But, I mean, Team USA is the best. So, that's what's up. Anyways, have a good week, everybody.